Hello and welcome. I'm Martin Rostan and in the next couple of minutes I will introduce you to EtherCAT G and G10, the expansion of our well-known EtherCAT technology to gigabit, physical layer and beyond. But let me start with some introductory remarks. EtherCAT is known to be by far the fastest industrial Ethernet technology available and it's particularly suited for field bus type applications such as controller to drives, controller to I.O. and sensors etc. And whereas others may adopt gigabit physical layer and require gigabit physical layer for performance reason, EtherCAT does not. EtherCAT is the fastest and will remain the fastest. Even on 100 megabit EtherCAT will remain faster than any other gigabit based technology. Why? Because of our unique functional principle called processing on the fly. Instead of sending one frame with the output data to each node and receiving an input frame with the input data from each node, the master sends one frame through all the nodes and each node extracts its output data from that frame and inserts its input data into the very same frame. In doing so, they use the bandwidth of this frame twice. Furthermore, all the nodes share one overhead. This makes the application data ratio incredibly high and the performance of EtherCAT extremely fast. However, some applications have an extraordinary high demand of bandwidth that exceeds the 100 megabit that EtherCAT can provide today. One example is measurement applications with oversampling. What does that mean? It means, for instance, an analog input is sampling multiple times for every communication cycle. And we have analog input today that sample at 300 kilohertz with 24-bit resolution and multiple channels. And you can imagine that this requires a lot of bandwidth. Another example is cameras with live streaming. If you have a smart camera which does the image processing inside the camera and just reports the result of that image processing over the Feedbus network, you don't need a lot of bandwidth. But as soon as you start streaming film videos over the network, you need a lot of bandwidth for doing so. Then there are complex motion applications that require a lot of bandwidth. One example is the Beckhoff XTS system which uh, 3 meter of that transport system requires 64 megabit per second net data throughput and you can imagine if you have a long system like that you need multiple EtherCAT networks to handle this or you need more bandwidth. And then there are applications with huge number of devices that still require very short cycle times for various reasons. Today this is solved by using multiple EtherCAT networks to a single controller. This is doable and possible, but if you just want to use one single network, you need more bandwidth than 100 megabit EtherCAT can provide today. Let's have a look at the application range of EtherCAT. I mean, most Feedbus devices only generate and consume small amount of data, such as a sensor, an I.O. device, or even a drive and a smart camera that I just mentioned. Even an entire I.O. station only needs a few bytes and not kilobytes. And EtherCAT is capable of handling all those devices even up to a very large amount of nodes in a network. But if we talk about devices with even more bandwidth requirements, there are some limitations that we overcome with introducing EtherCAT G. At gigabit speed we have more bandwidth available and we can expand the application range for EtherCAT substantially. EtherCAT G and G10 is both using the same functional principle of EtherCAT at 100 megabit per second but at higher data rates. So it's fully compatible and of course we also are fully compatible to the IEEE 802.3 standards using standard Ethernet frames not changing anything to the frame format. You don't even need to change your software in the EtherCAT master. If you have a gigabit port available you can run EtherCAT G in um, standard mode right away without changing anything in the software. If we look at the technical basics, EtherCAT G is making use of a um, standard physical layer from the Ethernet world, from the IT world named 1000BASE-T, which is another full duplex physical layer. This is a widespread 
technology and will remain available for a long time to come. And of course the frame is 10 times shorter than with 100 megabit instead of 122 microsecond for the full-blown frame with 1500 bytes of payload data we only need 12.2 microseconds for the same amount of data over the network. If we expand this to gigabit to 10 gigabit um, bit rate this goes down by another factor of 10 and we can now convey 1500 bytes of payload data in just 1.22 microseconds or a small frame with just 0.06 microseconds. Of course 10 gigabit Ethernet today is not on the inexpensive side yet but this will change over time and then it will become a feasible technology for the automation world as well. If we look at the technical basics as I mentioned before for standard, in standard mode, EtherCAT G does not need any software change in the master. All you need is a gigabit port. Of course, on the physical layer, there are changes. The slave devices, as well as the cabling, needs to support a thousand base T. This means eight conductors in the cable instead of four, eight pin connectors. RJ45 is 8-pin already, so that's, uh, this doesn't change, but in case of IP67, the M12 connector needs to be changed to the X-coded version so that it provides the 8 pins that we need. Cables, we can use CAT5 cables for EtherCAT G as well, if we use them in 8-wire configuration. And with G10, we require um, CAT6A or CAT7, depending on the length of the network that we want to cover. It's very important that EtherCAT G is fully downwards compatible to EtherCAT and therefore an EtherCAT G slave if introduced in a 100 megabit Ethernet EtherCAT environment just behaves exactly the same like a 100 megabit device. The auto negotiation capability of the EtherCAT network ensures that and then the device is switched back to 100 megabit mode. In the other way around um, this doesn't work like this. We need the data rate propagation. So if you introduce a 100 megabit device into a gigabit environment, the gigabit devices need to learn that there is a 100 megabit device in the network now. They do this with this data rate propagation functionality and then they switch back to 100 megabit so they're again fully compatible to the device that was just introduced. What is now new with EtherCAT G is the so-called branch concept and this branch management gives us two important additional functions. First of all, it allows us to integrate 100 megabit segments into a gigabit backbone or a 10 gigabit backbone. And secondly, it gives us the ability to run multiple segments in parallel. So unlike before where the frame went through all the devices and then back to the master, now we separate frames for each segment and run them in the segments in parallel. You see here the frames arrive in gigabit mode. If it's 100 megabits underneath they are uh, converted into 100 megabit frames. On the way back change into gigabit again and send back to the master. This works as well if the segments underneath are gigabit segments. Of course then the frames are not changed into 100 megabit but remaining gigabit frames throughout but at the same way we are running multiple segments in parallel and save on the propagation delay side of the communication time. We can even combine 100 megabit and gigabit segments underneath a branch controller and you see here of course in the 100 megabit segment the frame is a 100 megabit frame and then switch back to gigabit on the way back to the master. This works not only with gigabit and 100 megabit but also with 10 gigabit so we can have underlying networks from 10 gigabit to gigabit to 100 megabit and can mix and match uh, according to the devices that we have available and to the application requirements. But let's have a look at some use cases and let's start with a large machine network with 128 server access. If we run this with conventional 100 megabit EtherCAT in a line topology you see that we end up with about 237 microseconds communication time. Now communication time is the time 
for the frame to make it through all the devices and come back to the mass. So this is not necessarily the cycle time. With EtherCAD we don't have to wait for the frame to return to the MASA before we send the next one. We can send frames back to back over the network. So the cycle time in this case can even be shorter than the 237 microseconds. But if we look at the worst case scenario, so to speak, where we wait for the entire frame to return to the master, then we end up with 237 microseconds in a 100 megabit configuration. If we go with gigabit throughout, we win, but we only win a little bit. The communication time is reduced to about 150 microseconds because the propagation delay remains pretty much the same. We only win on the frame length, so the frame becomes shorter, but the propagation delay time remains pretty much the same as with 100 megabit. So the gain with regards to communication time is not very convincing. However, if we, do, if we introduce the branch controllers and split up our network into eight subsegments, you see we win a lot. The communication time goes down by a factor of five and we still use the same 100 megabit drives that we have been using before. We just run the eight segments in parallel and this gives us a lot of uh, performance improvement. We can even go a step further and introduce gigabit throughout. Then we go from 237 down to 34 microseconds, a factor of about seven. And here you see then we win a lot in performance. However, if we compare the four different approaches and topologies that I just introduced, it's very obvious that just moving from 100 megabit to gigabit performance without changing the topology at all doesn't make a lot of sense. We only gain a little bit in, with regards to communication time. Of course, we can win a lot with regards to bandwidth, so we can introduce devices with higher bandwidth requirements in our network, but with regards to, to cycle time, we don't win a lot. This we do as soon as we introduce the branch controllers. Now you see five times faster with 100 megabit subsegments and seven times faster with gigabit subsegments. And because the 100 megabit subsegment is the one which is well proven, which is the very robust physical layer, and for which the largest product variety in the industry is existing already, I expect that this will be the predominant solution for the years to come. A gigabit backbone with 100 megabit devices down below for applications that require extremely short cycle times. And of course, we have the ability to also integrate high bandwidth devices in our network on the gigabit side of things. Let's have a look at another application example. In this case, a conveyor belt in the mining industry. Those conveyor belts, they can be up to 10 kilometers long and four meters wide. And at 40 kilometers per hour, you can imagine they're transporting a lot of iron ore, a lot of mass. And if those belts rip apart, it's a disaster. And um, this needs to be avoided by all means. For that reason, they need to introduce condition monitoring. This is done by having um, conductor loops vulcanized into the conveyor belt and having very high sample rates for analog inputs that sample um, the movement of the belt. Up to 400,000 values per second are locked by the system throughout the network. And we need about 322 megabit of user data or payload data. And you, of course, this cannot be done with a single 100 megabit EtherCAT network. But if we split this up to four EtherCAT networks, they can all run to the same master. Um, we can cover this application with standard conventional 100 megabit EtherCAT. But we end up with more than 80% bandwidth usage. There's not much leeway in that. And, um, but it's doable. If we do the same thing with EtherCAT G, with an EtherCAT G backbone, with branch controller functionality, we can use the same 100 megabit I.O. terminals that we used before, the same analog inputs as before, but we can now send the data over that gigabit backbone in a much faster way on gigabit data rate. And you see that instead of more than 80% bandwidth users, we only utilize about 
a third of the bandwidth and have a lot of bandwidth remaining for other data, for um, parameterization, for whatever we want to do. So let me summarize as follows. EtherCAD is and will remain the fastest industrial Ethernet technology, even at 100 megabit per second. And EtherCAD-G is not a new version of EtherCAD. It is a downwards compatible enhancement, but it's not a new version of EtherCAD. There's no versioning situation in EtherCAD at all and no incompatibility over time. The branch controllers allow us to integrate the very robust and very proven 100 megabit technology into a gigabit backbone and we can run both 100 megabit and gigabit devices in parallel and in a compatible way. So it's fully interoperable. We can introduce parallel processing now to reduce the propagation delay times and thus the communication time, so we gain in performance even by using 100 megabit devices down below in the field. And that's where you want to use 100 megabit. I mean, who would use gigabit physical layer if 100 megabit does the job nicely? So EtherCAD-G is not replacing 100 megabit EtherCAD. This will remain the primary solution for IOs, drives, etc. But we can now enhance applications with gigabit and then 10 gigabit speed if we need them, if we have devices with very high bandwidth requirements. So EtherCAD-G and EtherCAD-G10 ensures that EtherCAD is future-proof. Thank you very much for your attention and bye-bye. <laughs>